Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Game Changer Mentality Podcast. I am your host, Rodney Flowers, best-selling author, keynote speaker, and resilience trainer. And I'm very excited about another episode, as I'm always, I'm always excited about the Game Changer Mentality Podcast. And today I'm, I'm, I'm completely just hyped up and ready to roll with this guest that I have in the studio today with me. Awesome Shane Austin is what I call him. And, and once we're done with this, really, this, this interview, you'll know why I call him that. This guy's amazing. He's a quarterback for the American the Arena, I'm sorry, Arena Football League. And he's the president of Extreme Focus, which is a great self-development company that he's going to give us more inf information about later on in the show. But I'm just really excited that this brother has decided to, to join me and allow me to interview him. And so get get ready because this guy is full of energy. He's full of information. He's young. He's, he's He has the entrepreneur spirit and he has a heart to serve, which is what I love about him. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Austin, awesome Shane Austin is in the building with us here today. Hey, Rodney, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And it is funny you say American quarterback because I've actually played out in China. So you could even consider me Chinese quarterback if you want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's great to have you here, man. And I actually had an opportunity to go watch you play a couple of days ago. And man, I was just, oh, it was awesome and amazing. You are an awesome athlete. And you blew me away, dude. You, you really did. You blew me <laughs> I, away. I appreciate it. That was a good one to watch. We, we had a good win, a good team victory. So I'm glad you saw one of our, one of our good ones. <laughs> you got a bit of an arm on you, man. I seen you throw a bomb. Uh, you know, it's, it's a smaller arena. You know, it makes it look a little better. You don't have to throw it as far. <laughs> uh, but it was awesome, man. And so um, you're the quarterback of the team, which, which you know, you're, you're the leader of that team and and you guys showcased some resilience out there there was a you know a turnover at least one one or two turnovers that you guys had to fight through um and it was a tight game in the beginning you know and it looks like it was going to be uh, a tight game all the way through the end but you guys were you managed to pull away but you know i just want to before we get into extreme focus and things like that i do want to talk about that particular part of the game because it was critical you guys could have really you know, fell apart with a couple of turnovers, a couple of calls that you guys had, but you guys remained resilient. So what was going through your head when, when you guys were experiencing that? Well, especially in arena football, it's more of a marathon than a sprint. So you got to be able to take the highs and the lows and you got to really be able to stay in the moment, embrace the moment. And that was one of my intentions going into it. I had three intentions that I wanted to stay solid with that didn't matter how the game went, whether it went good, bad, up, down, sideways, you got to be able to stay present in this moment because with that mindset, this moment could be the biggest play of the game. It doesn't matter what just happened if I threw, a, I threw an interception on the first drive of the game, and that could you know, send you into a downward spiral. Uh, the same thing with life, right? You have a mistake. You have some failures. You come up short sometimes when you feel like you're giving your all on everything, and you can get frustrated and beat yourself up, but then you lose – a uh, piece of right now in this moment. And I think that's one of the most important things in football and in life and in, in any area of life is staying in the moment because that's tr really, truly all we can control. So my one of my intentions was win the one. And what I mean by the one is win that one play, win that one opportunity, win that one matchup, whatever it was, this moment right now is only one. You can't have multiple of them. So it's just say, hey, it doesn't matter what happened last play. It doesn't matter what's going to happen later on. It's a marathon. Stay in this present moment and win the one. And, uh, you know, we were ended up able to win the one and win the entire game. So that was a, that was a, good, uh, it was a good showcase. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I, I love that. Win the one. Win the one. Win the one moment. The present. The present moment. You know, sometimes – Focusing on the future can be a distraction. Focusing on what, you know, you want to get right later on down the road can be a, be a distraction. It distracts you from what you need to do or what you need to focus on right now. Absolutely. So. I mean, the, when you look at the long term, especially, okay, going to a football season, you got a long, sometimes 18-game uh, season, 
And that can be a little daunting. If you're trying to win all 18 games at one time, that's going to be overwhelming. And same with life. You've got some big goals, but maybe they're down three, five years from now. That's going to be a little overwhelming. But if you just take it back to one day at a time, one step after the other, you don't, like Martin Luther King says, you, um, you don't have to see the whole staircase. You just got to take that first step. Mm-hmm. And it's one step at a time. And, and, and that's the, that mindset that you got to have. It's like a 1-0 and mindset. Just this week, go 1-0. and doesn't matter the rest of the season. Just this week focus on that it's easy because we're getting close to playoffs it's easy to start looking ahead and start thinking okay this matchup this man it doesn't matter at the end of the day just win this game and and that's that seemed to help us out in those moments so is that something that you share with your teammates I mean is that a a team motto or or how do you as the quarterback make sure the entire team has that mentality that's definitely something that when you get together as a team especially right before you go into the game or even at the beginning of the week you want to remind them it's 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 easy sometimes to forget the little things. It's easy to overlook those things. So as a, as a leader, you have to just sometimes nudge people into the right direction. It's not that they're very far off track. You just have to continue to remind people to stay in that mindset, to stay present. If that's the focus point right there is stay present. Hey, man, it still comes down to one play at a time. When we're down eight points or something and the game is on the line, Like last week, we were in Albany, and we were down 12 points with less than a minute left. And at that point, you can't control the deficit that you're in in this moment. You can't control necessarily the the situation or the cards that you're dealt. But, hey, you're in this situation now, and we're going to make the best of it because all you can control is this moment. So I kept reminding the guys, hey, just take it one play at a time. One play at a time, we'll see what happens. As long as there's still time on the clock, we got a chance. And we were able to score. We were able to get the onside recovery. We were able to go down the field. And with 0.4 seconds, we ended up scoring the buzzer beater go-ahead touchdown last week. So it still came down to playing in the moment. Even though it looks heroic in this last second buzzer beater victory, it still came down to one play at a time. When you keep it simple, amazing things can happen. You know, I've seen that play on ESPN, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and I've been watching it on YouTube over and over. So that's, that's, that's amazing that that mentality led to something that spectacular happening and ended up being a highlight for you guys. Not only a win, but a highlight for you. Absolutely. And, and only a few drives earlier, I, I had some bad plays that I wish I had back. And there's a play where we got stopped on fourth down. And that could have been the game right there. And you can easily go into the tank when you have a setback like that. Sure. But again, it, you got to reset. You got to be able to kind of have that stoic approach where you're just level headed, regardless of the score, because you, that sets you up for the success. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make ESPN and make this heroic play, but at least you're in position to make that play when you have that mindset. So what do you do? Because this is game changer mentality, right? And so you, you talked about, you know, having a level head, you know, maintaining this mindset. So before a big game, you know, what, what do you do to get yourself and your guys in that zone or get that mentality in place to go in and, and tackle the challenges that you guys are, are sometimes up against? Well, first of all, I love the concept, just game changer mentality, because I'm all about game changers, being around game changers, people that support and build you up, lift you up. Um, but after you've put in the physical work, you know you've, you've prepared yourself to the most, best of your ability. There's nothing really much more you can do physically night before a game or something like that. What I like to do is really dive into visualization. I'm big on the mental side of the game, as you know. And we do a thing within Extreme Focus we call Game Ready. And I've given you a Game Ready before. I hope you enjoyed it. (laughs) I did. I did. And I still do it. (laughs) That's awesome. I love it. It it is. It really is a game changer because it locks you into a few intentions. Like I said, I had a few intentions going into the game. You lock yourself into a few intentions because everything else is a distraction. So you want to get yourself narrowed down into that focus, those focus points. Then you tap into gratitude, which I'm telling you is, is a, an absolute game changer because mm-hmm. I think that's a secret weapon. A lot of people understand that, yeah, you got to be thankful and appreciative and all that stuff. But when you truly come from a place of gratitude, there's no negative thoughts. You're in totally a positive flow of mind. And when you're in that flow, in that frame of mind, there's a world of possibility and opportunity. And so we always want to start grounded in that gratitude and then the third step is getting into that visualization and seeing it so clearly, seeing in detail what you want to happen on the field. And this is something I do off the field as well. This is in the business and anything. A game ready gets you locked in. And when you can see it 
clearly in your head, you can really trick that subconscious mind into believing you've already done it, you've already accomplished it. So that way, when you actually do take the field, you just tap into what they call that flow state, or as athletes call it, in the zone, because mm -hmm. you've already seen it, your body goes into muscle memory, and it's absolutely uh, amazing when you can just tap into that. And one thing I've been doing, I want to say just within the past year or so, I used to just see it perfect, you know, every, just a perfect game, everything's just going... And when I, when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? It never really happens perfectly. You know, mm -hmm. even in life, things don't just happen perfectly. It's just, that's the way it is. They even say statistically football plays 70% uh, of the time don't go the way that you prepared them to go. <laughs> you got to be able to react. You got to be able to respond. So I've been starting to see actually um, either setbacks or challenges throughout the game and then visualizing myself overcoming those challenges. That's the key there. So if you can see it, and you already prime your mind to, to be able to handle that, then you can have that level head when you come to the game because you're like, you know what, I already saw this challenge. I already saw this, maybe this setback. Maybe I threw an interception, but now I'm bouncing back because it's back to this moment. And visualization is, is a game changer. I love this. I mean, this, this is key right here, you know, because for those that are listening, what I'm hearing you say is that you want to see yourself as an overcomer. You want to see yourself not like exclusive of the challenges and obstacles, but overcoming them getting through them you know and so when you can see yourself doing that type of thing when the challenges come you're not taken aback by it you're not thrown off guard because this is all part of your makeup this is all part of the the process that you already have in place subconsciously and you see yourself as that person and you have the confidence that's going to give you the confidence to even deal with it whether you're down 12 points with a, just a few seconds left to go in the game whatever the situation is you've seen yourself overcome situations like that it, you know, the interesting thing about this season that I've never dealt with before was this is the longest off season I've had because really I kind of retired. I hung up the cleats in a, in a way. I wasn't planning on playing this year. Last time I played was two years ago. And I'd, I'd just been training physically just like in the weight room and stuff, but I haven't been throwing. I haven't been doing all this stuff. And then I got picked up mid season with this team and you normally you're with camp. You're getting the timing down. You've had an entire off season of training, throwing the ball and all that stuff. I really had to rely on this visualization piece because wow. I didn't have the physical side. And I knew that my, my body could do it because, you know, the muscle memory and that. But again, there's some rust. There's some things that you got to, you know, two years being off is no easy feat. So even in the off season when I was training and stuff, I was like, I would take an opportunity if I was doing core or something, I'm doing bridges, which are the worst they suck or <laughs> I would just sit there because you just got to sit there for like a minute and hold it I would just visualize plays I would just start seeing it in my head over and over again and just seeing myself and again that muscle memory can can start clicking and once I got back to playing again I signed with the team I went back and watched some film of myself even back in 2014 just to like see it again see myself mm. on the field see what it felt like when I was playing at my best so that way I could just pick it up right where I left off because your, your, your mind remembers it. Even if it's a feat you've never accomplished, you can almost trick yourself into believing that you have done it before. Wow. And then you, you're more comfortable in that scenario rather than feeling, you know, oh, this is way out of my comfort zone. Wow. You're like, you know what? I can handle this. Wow. Wow. And so you're president of, of Extreme Focus as well. And so tell us a little bit about Extreme Focus. What, what is that? Extreme Focus is a company actually my, my father founded and created because he's a mental performance coach. He's been working with some of the top athletes in the world. He's been working with Army Rangers, Navy SEALs, uh, Olympic athletes, and now transitioned it into business, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and all that stuff. So he came up with a company, Extreme Focus. I just became certified as a coach, and I wanted to start doing it just on the side of what I was still playing football. That was my passion, so I was able to be flexible enough I could still have my clients on the phone, on the side. But then once I, I decided to completely commit to it, you know what, I'm going to come in and, and, and I earn my way into the president uh, role and the business side. It's a completely different animal than, you know, when you got sports or you got you just your self-employed, you know, coaching people. Actually, being a president of a company is a whole different animal and you got to have a business mindset now and you got to see things a little bit differently. But at the end of the day, I've noticed that sports translates so beautifully into life, into business, into all of these things. Those same mental performance principles applies to all areas. So it's not only me teaching it, it's me using it too. And I'll tell you, it, it's taken my 
game on the field to another level, but off the field as well. When I've been able to tap into some of the mindset tips and tricks and principles that we teach ourselves, you, you got to be able to, to do it yourself before you can go and teach it. And, and that's, it's been a game changer. Yeah. So, so what are some of those things? I know we, we, we have limited time here. So what are some of the things that you guys teach in terms of the mental toughness that has helped you on the field from, from extreme focus? So one of the things that makes us unique um, in regards to what we teach and and what other people, I think there's so many great people out there that are doing this type of work. I know you're doing some great stuff and I know we, we definitely connected on a lot of stuff that you've been doing. The thing that what we do that I think just adds to any other, if you already have a mental performance coach that you're working with or you don't, this just supports it and it helps cement it in as we use animals as a way to use their instincts to learn from them, but also you're able to recall that principle or that lesson. So if we talk about, we talked about um, staying in the moment, right, earlier. One of our principles we have is the hummingbird. And the reason we use the hummingbird for that particular principle is because they flap their wings faster than any other bird and they're the only bird that can actually hover and fly backwards and all of that stuff. So when they go and take the nectar from the flower, and they go and soak in the nectar. You ever watch a hummingbird? They fly backwards, hover for a moment, embrace that moment, embrace the nectar. There's like, oh man, that is some good nectar. And then they go right back into it. And that is our reminder that you got to be able to embrace the nectar of life each and every moment, not looking past the next flower or, or, or back to the last mistake. Just take a moment and soak in the now. And what we name, we name each animal too. And the name of the hummingbird is Etmo, E-T-M-O embrace the moment and okay. that that right there is we could teach a principle all we want but if you can't remember in the heat of the moment when the pressure's on when in the times when you need it then what's what's the use so we've we've developed these mental triggers we call them beast triggers because they're animals and they're beasts and it unlocks the beast from within when you can <laughs> tap into that trigger it helps you recall it right there in the moment you can just say one word etmo and you go right into right action. You go into embracing the moment. So sometimes that's my intention. Instead of win the one, I'll just say Etmo. And I know right now we've developed this language. But I say Etmo, I'm embracing the moment. So that's a trigger. So those are triggers that you guys are developing. Right? These are triggers. Just like when I was talking about visualizing challenges and overcoming and stuff, these triggers are for, okay, when you face this challenge or you face with this setback, insert this trigger and boom, this is going to help you overcome it in this moment. And you can decide on which trigger applies to you in this moment. They all serve a purpose. And one of my great mentors, Roger Anthony, who he's, he's the one who developed the animals and then partnered up with my father with extreme focus mm-hmm. uh, to bring these to it. He, he was the one that he, and he unfortunately passed away in 2014, but he told me, Hey, the answers are always in the animals. And I've, I've literally to this day, any problem I've come up with, any challenge that I'm faced with, I look to the animals and the answer shows up. The answer is always in the animals. And, and that's, that was a valuable lesson for me. And now I'm blessed to be able to give back and teach that same thing. Wow. I love that. I mean, it's funny that you say that because a lot of times when we're dealing with obstacles, we're dealing with challenges, we're so focused on the challenge. We're so focused on the obstacle, you know. And then if we're not focused on the challenge and the obstacle, we're focused on how sucky it is, right? <laughs> how, pain, right. how painful it is, right? Right. Um, and it's good to have those reminders, those triggers that we can go to. And that helps us kind of regroup and, 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 and remember that, oh, wait, boom, a beast trigger. This is what I should be thinking. This is what I should be doing. So I think that's, I think that's, that's great uh, to have. I mean, I almost want to have like some type of matrix in my office on the board that I can just look at and meditate on and really get them all like deep in my subconscious mind. So, you know, I can just recall on them at any given time. So I really love that. Yeah. I love that. And so you are, you are a leader as, as the president of, of extreme focus and you're a leader as a quarterback. So what, what type of challenges have you had to overcome as a leader? In, in, well, in both, not just with winning games. I know, you know, being out on the field and leading the guys, but just, you know, they look up to you. You know, the, the, I mean, the quarterback is is the main guy. All the other players look up to, and as the president, you're you're kind of leading the company as as well. So, 
there's challenges that you have to deal with when it comes to dealing with, with people and how they, they deal with challenges as well. Absolutely. And, and you'll you see the, as I've gone through, you know, this journey of mine, um, I've seen how the same leadership principles applies to, to the business as well as it does to sports. But I learned a leadership and the importance of it at a very early age. When I, when I started playing football, I was about, I want to say, I think I started at nine years old. And I didn't start off as a quarterback. I started off as a receiver. I was a backup quarterback and um, really only had one opportunity because the quarterback got sick and I, and I got in and played a game. But the next year, my, my coach, I had a great youth football coach. And that's, that's a huge thing, too. I was very blessed to have just an awesome support system in this coach. But in that offseason, when I was training and working out with the team and stuff, he said, okay, he saw me kind of dogging it on a uh, on a on conditioning drill. I didn't really go all out. I was kind of in the middle of the pack. But it wasn't bad. I was kind of upper in the front. You know, I was still in pretty good shape. But um, he said, if you're going to be my quarterback, you got to be the first in every single drill we do, every single wow. conditioning, all of that. You got to be first. Wow. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I was learning a very valuable lesson just in that moment. Is that leadership by example is so much more powerful than a vocal leader. I mean, yes, there's a time and a place to be that vocal leader, but if you haven't earned the respect of your team, then, you know, I've seen very, you know, a lot of vocal leaders that, you know, people just tune them out because they have, they know that they aren't a person of their word. And when I know a strong leader is one who has integrity, one who is do as I do, not as I say, you know, necessarily some of the people, they say like, do as I say, not as I do, but they're not the ones able to actually walk that walk. And they're just talking the talk. Then that I, I've always found that that's kind of a hollow leader. And if I want to be a full solid from the foundation up type of leader, I've always felt that you got to be able to lead by example. And when that coach told me at a young age that I got to be first on the conditioning drills, Again, that was a powerful thing, and I was. I was first every time after that. I, I just committed to it fully. When I committed to that, I not only committed to myself, but I committed to my teammates as well, and they knew that I was a guy that they could rely on, especially when the game was on the line. They know that I put in the work, they put in the work. Everybody can rely and trust on each other, and that's a valuable lesson for life is that I've always felt that don't ask other people to do something that you're not willing to do yourself. And when you can get that buy-in and you've earned that respect, then there's a point where, yeah, you can get vocal. Yeah, you can motivate people and you can, then they respect it. They understand, oh man, yeah, I'm going to listen to that guy. You think Peyton Manning comes into a huddle. You think people aren't respecting that guy. He's gone out there. He's got a track record. He's got respect from the entire league and people are going to listen when he speaks up. Now, maybe a young unproven guy, they might not listen as much because he hasn't proven himself. So it, it is tough though, because like for this season, again, another unique situation for me is I'm used to being with the team in camp. I'm used to being with them in the off season and training with these guys, getting to know these guys. This season, I came in mid season. They, they had their quarterback go down who it's really his team. He's the leader. And now I'm coming in to kind of fill in that role to help out. That's been an interesting dynamic for me. So it's like, do I just come in and, be that vocal guy right away or again I, I I had to come back to I just got to do by example I, I don't need to talk it I just need to go out there show them I'm going to bust my butt every day in practice I'm going to go and work the hardest out there that I can and show them that I'm I'm here to work I'm here to help you guys any way I can and hopefully my actions speak louder than any words and um and, and I think that I've earned that respect the guys have been able to really uh, um, support me in that way too. And, and you can see on the field, we've had su success and I've only been here for a few weeks, but th those little things, they add up. So I think the biggest thing for me is, is leading by example. Wow. And you know, it's tough when you're coming in midstream, when you, you know, even if, if you're in a company and you, you get moved from, from one department to another, or, or, you know, you move from one company to another company and you're coming in as the leader and you hadn't, they don't know you. You're just, you're, you're just kind of filling in this position as the new leader. And now you have to establish yourself, you know? And I love, I love what you're saying because one of the best ways to establish yourself is 
to lead by example. A lot of people come in with different philosophies and, and, and styles and things like that. But when you're coming in with an open heart and you're just going to bust your butt and you're going to show them that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm just like you. I'm coming in. And I'm going to work hard every day. I'm going to give it all I got and I'm going to do my best. And oh, by the way, I'm human, too. Right. Subject to mistakes. But, you know, life is real. And, you know, we're going to fall on our butt sometimes, but we're going to get back up. We're going to make mistakes, but we're going to get back up and we're going to keep treading towards the destination. And so I, I love that. I love that that philosophy of just leading by example. And I think because, you know, um, it's not as sexy, so to speak. It doesn't have that that flair, you know, to it. lead by example. You know, a lot of people, I think, don't recognize the, the power in leading by example. They want to come up with these fancy little philosophies of leadership, but I don't think anything can take the place of, of leading by example. Well, and, and, and I know I use a lot of football terms and stuff, but w when you brought up, you know, to business or to life, and there's so many different areas that you could be a leader. It still, it, I've always felt that it, the foundation has got to be from integrity of who you are, who you need to be. That way, if you are shifted from position to position, maybe you got a different team and all that stuff, and you haven't been able to build up the track record with them yet or build that camaraderie to where you've earned that respect, as long as you always come from a place of integrity and your foundation is rock solid rather than a foundation that's set on sand that just drifts away, then you don't go with the roller coaster ride and all that stuff because you're level headed. You're always coming from a place of integrity, and that's a place that you can build some leadership off of. And then, like you said, you make a mistake when you're busting your your butt. You're gonna make some mistakes. You're gonna fail. You're gonna do that. But people are gonna be able to respect you and lift you up because they know you're coming from a place of integrity. You're giving your all. They're gonna be like, okay. He, 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 he might have made the wrong decision on this one, but I know his heart is in the right place, and I know he's not going to make that same mistake twice, and he's going to learn from it. And that's still a guy that we can rally behind because it's always coming from the, the, the rock-solid foundation of integrity. I love that. And so there's a lot of accountability that comes with, with being a leader, and I think sometimes that's what, you know, that's what uh, shuns people away from, from wanting to be in that, in that position, you know, it's accountability. And then you talk about integrity. And when I, when I hear integrity, the, the next word that pops up in my mind is discipline, you know, cause it, to, to be of integrity requires discipline, right? It requires a lot of discipline and you're, and you're held to that standard by that accountability because you're, you're in that leadership position. So, how have you been able to maintain that level of, of leadership and integrity and, and discipline on the field and, and even as the president of, of Extreme Focus? Because I would imagine there's a certain level of accountability there as well and, and integrity and, and discipline, right? And so how have you been able to maintain such a high level of integrity and leadership in both areas of your life? I think you nailed it right there with discipline because – it's, it's easy to have integrity when things are going right and all that stuff. But when you are tested or maybe you make a decision that affects the entire team negatively and it's on you, that's when your integrity is really tested and when you got to take ownership. And when it, you are confronted with that, you have a choice, whether you blame others or you, hey, I'm going to put the finger on me. This is on me. I'm going to be better from that. And that's something that I've always try to emulate whether it's on the field or off the field if it's on the field if I make a bad pass it's on me if I make a good pass and the receiver drops it I'm gonna think instead of hey man catch that ball it's it's hey it's a tough job in any position everybody's trying their best to, to be the best at their position I'm gonna think what can I do in my position to give him a more catchable ball how can I make his job easier I look to myself first so then when I come to business it's the same way if I'm gonna ask somebody to do something and and maybe I make the wrong decision whatever that is or maybe it's a bad result I'm gonna first always look to myself what could I have done better and that's taken ownership and when you got when you're in that leadership position you got to be able to take ownership especially at, at I've learned that the uh, the hard way and the good way, I guess, at quarterback because quarterback's always the first one to blame and always the one who gets too much credit when you win. So I've been on both ends of the spectrum. When we lose, 
it's all the quarterback, right? It's, it's their <laughs> fault. Even when I know deep down, okay, there's this guy, you know, it's still a team sport and all that. You still, at the end of the day, have to take it. And, and, and I think that just comes with the position. That comes with the responsibility. There's times where I knew it was maybe somebody else, but then the media, they come and ask me, Hey, you know, what's, what's going on here? What's and they try to lead you into these traps. I'm like, you know what? It's me. It's, it's, it's on me. I got to be better at this. I got to be more accurate. I got to be able to lead a little bit better. And when you can take that ownership, um, even when it hurts, even when it's tough, that's something again, that the team will respect. And that's something that you can still build upon. Even on mistakes, you can still build upon that. Now, when you start throwing some people under the bus, that's going to be a little bit harder to, uh, to bring that back together and put the pieces back together. But when you take that, that ownership, and then when things do go right, it's giving credit to the team. It's going back to, no, this is a team, team win. This is a team thing. Um, you know, MVP award is, is the, the biggest team award disguised as an individual award. Again, it, it always comes back to the team regardless. So I, I think that ownership is a huge part of, of being able to stay a leader throughout and on and off the field. You know, and I love your, your humbleness. You know, this, that's something that we haven't talked about. I think that's a, a big characteristic of a, of a leader as well as, as staying humble and, and, and staying grounded. And I can hear it coming through from you as you talk about, you know, when there's a team win, you know, it's a team win. It's not nothing that, that, that I did, you know, regardless if you threw the winning touchdown pass or, or, you know, whatever you did that may have contributed to the win, it's still a, a, a team win. And so it takes a lot of strength and courage to, to, to take the rap when, when things go bad. And then when things go well, you know, offer that up to the team, you know, and I think that's an important trait of a leader as well to, to recognize when, when, Hey, this is on me, you know, I'm going to look at myself and figure out what I can do to make things better. And then when, when, when the, the glory is, is shared among, among the team. Um, so I think that's awesome. And kudos for you for being, being that type of leader. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and, and some of the things that we're talking about, actually all the things that we're talking about, th the more I think about them, you know, you can apply these to real life situations, not just on the field or in the boardroom, you know, as the president of a company, but a lot of times, you know, you, you talk about taking responsibility, you know, a lot of times in life, in your personal life, you know, we talk about being game changers. Not everyone is a football player. Not everyone is a, is a, is a president of a, of a major company, but we have challenges and obstacles in our lives. And we are the leader in our own personal, personal lives, lives. And so stepping up and taking that responsibility when, when there's an issue or things are not going the way you want them to go in life, in general, is, is a game changer. You know, what, what, are your, what are your thoughts about that for someone who's, you know, just an ordinary person that has goals and dreams that they want to accomplish? I mean, what are your thoughts towards that? I think it doesn't matter what profession you're in, whether you're self-employed, whether you're a, just an employee of a team, or you are the leader, you are the CEO, any of that stuff, when you, when you end up getting results, however they are, good or bad, I see that as just feedback. And when you can take that feedback and disattach yourself, the emotions from that result and just observe it, it how it is, then you're able to be able to see it with a different pair of eyes. And when you have a setback or say you have a failure or maybe your sales are down, gather in that feedback and see, okay, what can I do to improve that? What can I do? Because when you go and start to blame others, even if you're self-employed and it's just you, oh, well, this person does this, this person does this. Well, the sales aren't going to lie. That's just, that's just, you know, that's just feedback. To, you can either take it or you can be oblivious to it and try to blind yourself from it and ignore it. But that's, that's the fact of the matter is right there. So when you can take that ownership and put the finger back, to, okay, what can I do? Then you're gonna, coming from a place of power. You're coming from a place of strength. And then you're not truly failing. I, I believe that it's only a failure if you allow it to be a failure or it's only a setback if you allow it to be a setback. I call them even perceived setbacks because when you can learn from something or maybe you develop a relationship from something, but on the outside, the results didn't look good, then you can propel yourself forward and you're either a stronger person or you're a stronger company or now you've, you've now adjusted something and made it more you know stronger in that way and now you have a better product out there 
well, then it's a win. I mean, that was something that needed to happen, but it takes that, it takes that accountability to look at what do I got to do and look at it objectively rather than getting emotionally attached to the results. You look at it with, with this fresh pair of eyes and you, and you prepare yourself forward from it, then that's powerful. But it does take that accountability to be able to use that as a positive rather than letting that setback become just a setback. You know, I, I believe that sometimes the setbacks and, and the challenges of life can be deceptive. You know, and you just Amen. really, you, you just explained it so very well. You know, you look at these things and, and they look horrible, but within them are gold mines. Within them are answers. Within them are solutions. And there's growth. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it is that needle in a haystack and all you can see is the hay. But the needle is there, so just keep digging through it because eventually you can, you you will, you can get to it. And it, a lot of times it 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 seems so big, you know. It seems like a mountain, you know. You know, when you get to the top of the mountain, it's this small, a lot of times small little space that's there for you to to get up on. But the mountain is much bigger than that, and that's what you have to conquer in order to get to get to the top. And so it can be deceiving you know? Um, oh, absolutely. And, and, and most people want to ignore those negative results. And they want to just pretend that they're not there. And I think it's just so fascinating when people like, uh, when, when people are maybe not doing as well financially, that's when they don't want to look at their bank account. They don't want to look at their bank statement, all that stuff. It's like the ostrich just putting his head in the ground, not wanting to see it. It's like, it's still there. It's not going to change anything by you looking at it. Not is going to change anything, but what you can do is look at that and assess it and be like, okay, well, what, what is that feedback telling me? Rather, I mean, the information doesn't hurt us. It's how we perceive that information. It's how it affects our emotions. It's how we then go into that downward spiral. So that's one of the things is having that level head to see it objectively rather than getting all emotionally invested in those results. If you think of an investor, they're playing the long run, the successful investors at least. They're not looking for that quick rich uh, scheme or anything like that. They're going to take their highs and lows and their ups and downs. But in the long run, if you're playing the long game, you're going to end up okay with, you know, in the end, if you're smart and you're level-headed and not getting too flustered when things go a little awry. So you got to play the long game in life too. And I think that's huge with that resilience. So I, I can hear someone saying, OK, well, that, that makes sense to me. But but how do I how do I do that? I mean, I, I've tried. I, I, I look at my bank statement and it's not what I want it to look like. Actually, it's not been looking like what I want it to look like for, for years now. Or, uh, you know, I, I can't seem to get into momentum and get things going for me. You know, and I, I feel like I've tried to assess my situation, but nothing is changing. You know, so what would you say to that to that person who, who seems to be in this die loop or this do loop of, 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 you know, falling short or not, not accomplishing what they want to accomplish? And, and that's a great question. I love that question because that one is a, is a tough one for people to overcome because that, I think that's one of the most common things. It's like, okay, I feel like I'm doing the right things, but I keep getting the same results. I keep doing the wrong things and all that stuff. And a lot of times, especially the people that are looking into self-development, they're doing their affirmations. They are visualizing like we're saying. They're, they're trying to be grateful and all these things. They're doing the right things on paper but it's still not getting the right results and all that stuff. A lot of times there's some kind of block from within and it's something that we can't see. It's subconscious, it, but it's, it's not letting you get across that hump. It's like that thermostat, right? You set it to 70 degrees and when it gets too hot, 75, it kicks in the cold and it brings it back down. If it gets too cold, then it kicks on the heat and brings it back up. So you always are staying right at that it's like, why, even if I make good money, I go and spend it. And then I'm right back to where I was. If I'm not making good money, I'm able to save. I'm able to get right back. But you always stay at that same level. And that comes to our subconscious beliefs. And the way that you work, and this is, it can take some time, but the way that you got to work on getting your subconscious believing that you deserve the money and that you can allow and attract more money into you is you got to work on it on a daily basis. But if you don't believe it in this moment, you can do the affirmations. You can visualize it and all that stuff to help support it. But the only way that you can get to that subconscious where the real true strength is, that's that core belief, not just on the surface. Yes, I think I can. I think I can. Mm -hmm. It's 
It's in knowing it's conviction from within. It comes from the conscious mind. It comes from being able to take in a thought and only letting the ones that you want to let root ground the, the seeds in and be able to water those seeds day in and day out. Uh, but a lot of people allow those weeds to grow within their mm. subconscious. You know, they allow the negative influences. We're around so many different influences every single day, whether it's on social media, whether it's on TV, whether it's the friends you hang out with, your environment, all of those things play a factor into everything in your life. And when you're able to, you know, you can't necessarily mute all the thoughts that you have throughout the day, maybe they're negative or not, but you don't have to let them settle in and you don't have to water them day in and day out. You don't water the weeds, you pull the weeds out and then you only allow in those positive things, the things that uplift you, surround yourself with the people that are uplifting you, you surround yourself with, with friends that are going after and going and getting it. And then you start adopting that mindset. Now you're watering the right seeds. Now you're letting those things grow within you. And now you're developing that stronger belief system from within. Because again, our, our minds are like a, an iceberg. You only see the top tip. That's us. That's what we think about. But all the subconscious things, the things that we do just habitually, second nature, that's the bulk of it. That's the 90% of everything. All your results are habits. So it's working on those habits, surrounding yourself with the right people, the right environment. So that way you are only watering, you're feeding what you want to grow and you're starving what you want to die. I love that. And, and that just leads me to, a, to another thought about self-image, because I believe when you start doing those things, you know, you start cultivating your, your self-image and you start getting rid of all those negative beliefs. And you can you can start to really believe that you can become the person that you want to become. You know, it, it's kind of like like with football that like I, I really see myself as a football player, as a as a great football player, you know, and I, I embody that self-image and it wasn't just on the field i embody being a football player off the field i'm a ceo now i embody that i could you know i i i feel what that feels like i know what that feels like for me and i embody that so what 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 are your thoughts towards someone you know developing their self-image to be the person that they they really want to be i mean because you, you talk about the subconscious mind and the thoughts i mean this a lot of a lot of, of the blocks in my opinion, are because you don't really believe yourself to be the person that you really want to become. You can't see yourself as a Hollywood actress. You can't see yourself as a star football player, as a CEO, as a person with a lot of money, whatever it is. The self-image has, has a lot to do with that, in my opinion. Absolutely. And I think self-awareness is a huge thing because a lot of people say they want to achieve these things and say that they're going to go and do all this stuff, but they value their comfort zone more than they value that mm. success. And one thing that I found with, with that self-awareness, really being aware of where you're at and where your comfort zones are and what's limiting you is the key factor in being able to break those walls so you can start progressively grow in that comfort zone to allow new things is you gotta you gotta ask the right questions to yourself within right you gotta ask some questions on what is it what is serving me you know maybe you have high goals and, and you can say two two different scenarios you can see where you want to be your vision maybe you got a vision board you got to see where you want to be we also see where you're at right now and what is it that is what is a pain point that's keeping me where I'm at right now. And then also asking what is a pain point of getting to that goal? Because a lot of people just see the, the greatness of, of getting that goal and you see the people holding up the trophy and they feel great, but, but there's some pain to get to that goal as well. There's some hard work. There's some struggle that might have to get it. And that might be the thing that's holding you back. You're not willing mm -hmm. to step past into that barrier. So you got to ask the question, what is it that's holding me back? What are the pain points? And then if it's, it's, if the pain point is where you're at right now, well then increase that pain. Cause that's going to motivate you to get out of there. Like, Hey man, I don't want that. Pain I want to get out of that. And that's where you see the power of broke, right? Somebody looks at that. Bank account, so they're like, okay, this sucks. I need to get out of this. This that has to change. That pushes you, but you also need something to pull you pull forward. You. Right. In the inspired state. And that's, that's what are the gains from getting to that, to that goal. And obviously, you know, there's a lot of gains, but when you can identify what the pains are and, and kind of minimize that pain, okay, you know what? I'm willing to put in the work. I'm willing to become a different person so I can have something else. Most people, they think when I have that, 
when I have the nice car, when I have that thing, then I can do the things that I want to do. Then I can be who I truly want to be. But that's, it's reverse. You got to be who you need to be in order to do the things to help you to have those things. So you got to flip it on its head. And who do I got to become? Who do I need to be? And that requires stepping out of that comfort zone sometimes. Maybe it's only a little baby step. Maybe that's all it takes. Because when you take giant leaves out of that comfort zone, you see people do it all the time, New Year's resolutions and stuff. If they haven't been working out and all that stuff, they're like, you know what, I'm going every day, seven days a week, I'm cutting my diet, all these different things. By February, you don't see them in the weight room anymore. They just can't sustain that. But if you did baby steps, if you were to just do a little bit, uh, you know, you just change it. You know what, I haven't gone to the gym at all. Let me just go twice a week and I'll just do 30 minutes. And then once that becomes comfortable, all right, I'll go three times. And now maybe I'll go 45 minutes or something like that. Whatever it is, do baby steps where you can sustain it. And in the long run, that's a huge difference when you're looking back. Rather than a huge burst of just change, you can sustain it when you do the baby steps. So step out of that comfort decide who you got to become to be able to achieve what you want to have. I love this. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in the studio with Shane Austin, uh, president of Extreme Focus and AFL professional quarterback. Now, you you are a coach as well. Are you are you coaching with uh, Extreme Focus? I, I am. I do. I still have a few clients. I haven't really been focusing on the personal clients as much. I've been really diving into the business. We have certification programs that we have now. We have these what we call beast camps where we go to different areas and work with these high level performers and that way the business people can see a little bit behind the scenes at spring training at the olympic training center the uh special ops um all of these different events we have these little mastermind workshops and now i'm really diving into that but yeah i still do have some personal clients on the side because i just i just still love the working with one-on-one but also i love the uh the building the company to be able to reach more and that's why we developed the certification all that stuff because we f- figured me and my dad dave austin we could only reach so many people, just us two. So how can we reach more with the, the gifts that we've been given is we can develop an army basically uh, that can go out and continue to teach and, and spread this word. And we've got some rock star coaches and it's just been great to work with them so that they can go and spread the, the good word. All so how, how, can, uh, how can people reach you if they wanted to reach you, if they wanted to find out more about Extreme Focus? They wanted to increase their mental toughness. How can they get in contact with you? <laughs> well, hey, you know what? You can just contact me directly if you want. I mean, my email is, is Shane Austin. 014 so my full name then 014 at gmail.com but we also have extremefocus.com and that's a, a website we're still revamping right now maybe by the time this this podcast is is released that will be all all finalized uh, again um but yeah you can reach out to me on social media i'm on instagram twitter facebook at shane austin 10 that, that used to be my jersey number out here i'm number four but uh <laughs> shane austin 10 uh you can reach out to me in, in multiple ways and so can you spell that for, for the listeners as well? Yeah, so Shane, S-H-A-N-E-A-U-S-T-I-N-10. Awesome, awesome. Well, man, I just want to say thank you for uh, joining me. I mean, you're, you're awesome, and, and you have such a wealth of information. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed this time with you. Uh, I think you're just a great guy. And I love what you're doing in the world. I love the work that you guys do at Extreme Focus and out there on the field, you are a beast. So that beast training is <laughs> definitely paying off my brother. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. The pleasure is all mine. I really uh, appreciate the opportunity to come in here on your show. I love what you're doing as well. Like I told you before, when I heard you speak, I knew I had to get to know you. I had to go and sit at your table uh, you're a guy that really walks your talk like we talked about, and uh, you're, you're a living inspiration. So thank you for allowing me to be a guest on your show. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. And uh, for you guys out there listening, this is Shane Austin. I call him awesome Shane Austin. <laughs> Check him out, uh, and uh, you won't be disappointed. Shane is, is so full of information. And, you know, again, thank you for, you know, being with us here tonight, man, it's, it's, it's been awesome. So any last words before we, uh, before we wrap this up? Well, since we're talking about comfort zones, one of my favorite quotes is a ship is safe in harbor, 
but that is not what ships are built for. So I reckon anybody listening, go tackle the open waters, go tackle the rough seas and find yourself some new destinations. I love that right from Shane Austin. Go be a game changer. Go make it happen. Get out of your comfort zones and, and change the world because that's what we all are for. That's what we have those gifts. And, and Shane is, is definitely expressing his on the field and in the boardroom. So it's storming here, by the way. <laughs> we are dropping thunder tonight. <laughs> I love it. And I the love skies it. are talking to I us. tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you guys for listening to another wonderful episode of the Game Changer Mentality Podcast. We'll see you soon. Take care.